For those of you that don't know me, my name is Laura and I've been a makeup artist for over 30 years and certainly had my share of faces in these hands. And I really feel that it's a very special thing to do for somebody when you can make them over and transform them and you have the power too. So if you've got a mom or an auntie or a grandma or a sister or anybody in your circle that you really want to give a makeover to, especially that it's spring, it's going to get like nice weather outside, giving them a new lease on life by giving them a new look. So let's just see what you think of these 10 ideas to get you rolling with it. So as a makeup artist, one of the things that you don't always think of right away or you don't think of ahead of time is what your breath is going to smell like. So number one is going to be breath. And I just want to mention that it's not just for you, it's for the other person you're working on to make sure they're comfortable as well and sometimes people forget. So have a little bowl of mints, gums, whatever it takes in order for them to feel like, oh my gosh, my breath's okay, I hope, or your breath. And so always keep something in your mouth that's going to keep it fresh because yeah, you don't want that garlic poking through from the night before on, uh, you know, that hummus that you ate or whatever it was that you ate. So check your breath, check their breath, and make sure you offer them something so that they don't feel self-conscious either. Another thing we don't think of is to wash our hands from front to back and do a really good job, thorough job. We don't realize all the little things that can be left on our hands as far as like, even if it's clamminess or odors from chopping, cooking, maybe you're chopping onions earlier in the day, just make sure you give them a really good wash and disinfect before you work on them. And so now you've got good breath, your um, hands smell good, and if you happen to be a smoker for some reason, you want to make sure that you Febreze yourself or you don't have that smell of smoke on your clothing, make sure, make sure, make sure, especially if somebody is non non-smoker, they're going to get really put off by that smell. So keep in mind all of these things before you sit down with them. That doesn't mean douse yourself in perfume, by the way, because that can really mess someone up if they're sensitive to smell. So just get yourself a freshener and freshen up your clothing. So make sure that you've got some good disposable things available to you, whether that be um, your sponges. Uh, also, you can get spoolies that look like this. I'll grab some for you for the mascara portion of things or to brush out eyebrows, things like that. If you can, you can get them super cheap at the dollar store or you know at any drugstore. Just get some, some sponges, even the triangle ones that you see, the little wedgie sponges are fine. Or if you've got your own beauty blenders, make sure they're thoroughly washed before because you don't want to be applying any of your germs or your bacteria or anything else on uh, the other person, no matter how close they are to you, because it can really uh, be problematic. So if you're going to be using a mascara that's your mascara, you have to make sure that you use a spoolie or you just dip it once into the mascara and put it on thoroughly wash in between before and after um, the dip. So because there's so many things that can get spread, especially pink eye, stuff like that, with mascaras and eyeliners, for the most part, you want to make sure that those are going to be things that you can use on someone else before you go ahead and do that. So check your stuff. Then the next thing you're going to do as far as disinfectant is concerned is you're going to get some rubbing alcohol. You can put it in a little bit of spray and anything you're going to be using on them, you want to spray down, wipe down. Um, even if it's a pencil liner, you could sharpen that ahead of time. You could pre uh, wipe it with alcohol, any of those kinds of things. So disinfecting and sanitization, crucial, aside from all that's happened, you know, in our world the last couple of years, just for you, even if it's mom or whatever, make sure you clean everything because you just don't know um, what you might be passing on or what they may be passing on to you. And you better be, be, be safe than sorry. <laughs> okay. The next thing I do is I just do an overall check. I check and see what are the skin issues, what are the hair issues, mustache issues, beard issues. So have your tweezers ready and if you uh, can, you just want to pull, you know, if it's a chin hair or something, pull it taut because the tauter you pull, the easier it is 
for you to get it out and also it's less pain and as soon as you're done pulling that hair out you want to hit it with the sponge that's clean because it will numb the nerve endings or eyebrows so you just want to take out one or two at a time try to get out the really really loosey-goosey stuff the lowest stuff don't go into the actual eyebrow line because you could end up giving them a 90s brow and we're not in the 90s anymore um, and then you could have a little razor handy clean new razor if you need to shave like the face hairs or you can use a, one of the facial blending um, one of these type guys here that have a blade on it and you could uh, take off the hair so any of those things will work but trying to do the eyebrows without cleaning them out or doing lips without cleaning out the fuzzies all around the lip area yeah it's not so much fun so keep that in mind when you're going to attack it so you're going to that would be number four so we're going to move on to five now the next tip i want to give you is to be seated at eye level so what I my favorite position if I don't have a high chair where they're at my eye level and I have to sit down lower in a normal chair is I get an opposing chair that's the same height ish maybe I'm slightly higher and I uh, open my legs and I straddle and I come up real 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 close because if you're not close enough you can't get the detail work done and it's very difficult to maneuver so um, coming up real close and then going in uh, to do especially around the eye area where it's sensitive and then what you're going to do for positioning is whenever you're working on the eyelid you want to either get them to look down all the way or close if you're going to get them um, if you're going to do their mascara or anything like that then you may want to have them look down and you're going to lift this area here looking down and have them be allowed to blink because if not it's going to make them water and it's going to make it real real difficult for you to complete the makeup so looking down and lifting and then putting on the mascara that way so position is really really important I want you guys to avoid the pressing down on the head because it's so uncomfortable it's uncomfortable on the neck if you are going to touch somebody you want to make sure with your clean hands you can either use um, the back of a sponge I'll show you guys one let me grab one for you so yeah using a little puff like this in order to anchor yourself is a really good way to do it or if you um, don't have one of these you can touch but just touch really really gently with a finger or just gentle and nothing that's going to press on the face and nothing that does any tugging because nobody wants to have their skin tugged when they're getting their makeup done so keep that in mind just to help you along and also if you do use one of these one helpful thing about it is that if you do get a little bit of makeup on your fingers it doesn't end up on the face so these are handy to have but keep an eye on your fingers because if you've got some black or something on the tip of your finger while you're working you're going to end up nicking them and getting it all over so keep that in mind too so as far as skin issues are concerned if they've got any you know watch and look at the face and see if they've got any visible signs of redness around the eye which could indicate pink eye if they have any coal sores if they have any open wounds sores anything like that might not be the best time to be doing the makeover and i would postpone so just look at the skin issues if it's just oil then you can use oil blotting paper or you can simply just uh, refresh clean their skin off and moisturize with something that isn't too oily a light hydrating moisturizer um, if they've got really dry skin then you want to use something creamier more emulsified and that will be super super helpful for putting down the rest of the makeup otherwise it will look a little bit drier and cakier on the skin it will also kind of like absorb the makeup so you won't see it as much so putting a nice hydrating uh, moisturizer down and definitely if you have a primer that you love go for the primer as well as long as it matches their skin type so check and see what their skin type might be if they complain about dryness and if it's dryness due to lack of oil which usually happens in mature women or if it is dryness due to lack of water that's something a little bit different so you have to take a look at the skin and see what it's doing and see where you can 
kind of like work with it a bit. Um, if there's pimples and things like that, those can be worked with and just covered over as long as there's not any open scabs or anything that you could be concerned with that could cause infection by messing up in those areas. So keep a look at that and see if you can deal with some of their skin type issues or skin issues overall. So if you are going to be using your brushes on somebody, just make sure the night before or two days before, whatever it is, shampoo and condition your brushes ahead of time. You can use brush cleaner. That will suffice as long as it's not too gummed up. Um, but having nice clean brushes is an obvious thing to do. And like putting some makeup on somebody where you haven't even cleaned your brushes is not wise at all because there definitely can be bacteria that collects in there. Um, something like this, with the, which is a Liz Watier makeup brush cleanser, can give you an instant clean if you need it in a hurry. So check for those. There's Cinema Secrets. There's other ones out there, and they're super helpful for you know you're quick. Maybe you're going for a dinner out and you want to quickly help your mom, your aunt, your sister, your friend, whoever uh, do their makeup and look a little cuter for your outing. This is a great, uh, a great way to do it. And the fast way is to just have a brush cleaner nearby if you didn't prepare and wash your brushes well, ahead of time. Once you've completed the makeup, you want to definitely check it in natural light because you'll be surprised at how different it can look or how you can mess up by uh, not going in the natural light or missing something. So as soon as you're done the makeup or maybe during in the middle of it, you can walk them outside. I also suggest not letting them repeatedly look at the makeup um, as you're doing it because that also can, you know, distract yourself. It can make you lose confidence in what you're doing and it gives you a chance to, to fix any errors that you have. Make sure you have a concealer handy as well because that can be an awesome eraser if you guys happen to make mistakes, which obviously can easily occur during doing someone's makeup if you're not used to it. So have a concealer handy and use that as your magic eraser. Some Q-tips and a little bit of concealer and you could rub out mascara, mm -hmm. eyeliner, all kinds of stuff. So what are you going to focus on when you're doing their makeup? Obviously you want to focus on some basic things. So whether they wear foundation, or don't wear foundation, you want to at least have concealer ready to cover up any discoloration. Great if you can do full foundation and, and concealer and all that, but if they don't want that, then just at least have some concealer and make sure you put a base down underneath the eye and on the eyelid so that you've got a little something for it to stick to. Under the eyes, be really, really careful with how much powder you put because that will make um, any wrinkles and things like that come out. So be gentle with your concealer and gentle with your powder if they're mature and um, make sure it's not making their under eyes look more aged than they already feel it looks without makeup. So do your best with that. Then what I want you to do is focus on the eyebrow shape. Framing the eye is really, really important. You could use brown eyeshadow and water and an angle brush or any kind of smaller brush that can get into the eyebrow hairs. Then you want to go and fill the skin underneath the hair and create a little bit of a shape. Decide where you want your uh, arch to go and, and how far out you want it to extend. So you guys can always look on some of my other eyebrow videos. I can probably put that about, I've got a few of them up and you want to just make sure that you're placing the eyebrows in the right places and the arch in the right places. And yeah, so go through and, and uh, check out, I'll post my eyebrow um, video. It's kind of in depth if you want to take a look at that and see how that works. So after you've done their eyebrows and their eyes are framed, you've done the base, you've covered up some of the under eye stuff, then you want to focus in on shaping the eye uh, in the most flattering way. It doesn't have to be super colorful eyeshadow, nothing like I have on today. It could just be neutrals. But what you want to do is focus in on uh, lifting up the outer end for the most part and lifting up the eyelashes on the outer end. So if you can and if you feel courageous, you can do a little false half lash or a couple little flares. If not, then I want you to just really mascara up on the top lash especially and depending on the shape of their eyes on the bottom, you might leave that clean or you might put just a tiny bit of mascara, maybe a little smudge of eyeshadow underneath, but don't overwhelm them too much. If you want something for evening and to snazz it up, 
then always do a little bit of the waterline because that will bring the uh, focus in towards the eye and punch it up a little bit. So those are just some suggestions. So focus in on under eyes, eyebrows, lashes, lips. Make sure that the lips are not so overdrawn that it looks ridiculous and fake, uh, but you can overline them a little bit. Uh, use the type of product that's going to hold on their lips. That's not going to go away in 10 minutes. Um, if they don't wear makeup often and they're more comfortable with the lip balm or lipstick, that is totally fine. Just shape their lips and uh, do a little bit of light fill in and that should be good. But don't forget to do the lips because having moisturized, sexy, gorgeous lips are a plus for your makeover and you want to make sure that they feel sensual and they feel really good in their skin. I also just want to mention don't forget to give a good wash of warmth on the skin. Bronzer is your friend. It can do so much for adding a softness to the skin itself and make sure when you're bronzing that you're not forgetting the neck and the chest area behind the ears if the hair happens to be up. Just things to remember. Um, and with the blush make sure that you you know touch it on and you can build blush up so don't put so much that it's distracting but enough there that it warms their skin so these are just a few little tips now you're good you might get a waterer here's what to do so you can get a product called duraline from i think it's from inglot or you can get some um, eye drops keep those handy just make sure that if they've uh, touched your eyes at all that it's uh, you know wiped off clean and you're not touching their your eye drops to your eye and then their eye because that can cause an infection but um, you know using something like Visine if they have it in their bag or whatever to brighten up their eyes beforehand because playing all that uh, makeup around the eyes rubbing around can easily make them uh, red eyed watery and that's something that gets out of hand and then you don't know what to do because once it starts it just kind of like cascades so you want to try to avoid bugging their eyes as much as possible and have the direction so when you're um when you're doing the mascara on the top on this eye for example you want them to look down on the same eye or same direction as their eye is so if you're if you're doing this eye, you don't want them to look this way you want them to look out then you could do the lift and then put the mascara on. Or if it's easier for you, you can have them put it on. But I mean, some people aren't that good at doing their own mascara or they make a mess of their whole eyes. So sometimes it's better for you to do it. Uh, regardless, directing them to where to look up, down, sideways, whatever is crucial for somebody else. Um, and then when you're coming at their eye, you want to make sure that you come in slow looking down because if you come in quick you can have them jolt back and it will you'll get black raccoon eyes all over your eyes so make sure that you are directing them whichever way that you need them to go in order to get at the area that you're trying to get at okay so my last tip number 10 is going to be use a gentle touch um, we tend to be way rougher than we should be. So it should hardly move the skin when you're touching them. So be very, very delicate um, with how you control your pressure and definitely, definitely do that. These are good to have as well. These little uh, eye tapes, if, you, if you're having trouble with it not being nice and clean on the ends, you can get some eye tape like that from e.l.f. or even use masking tape and that'll be fine. Uh, and also don't go for a party on the face. Like I have this blue eyeshadow on today. If someone's getting a makeover, normally they want something sort of natural, lean towards natural and then punch up a little bit here and there with eyeliner and stuff. Don't go crazy party on the face because it's just going to make them want to go run and wash it off. Start slow, build their confidence and courage up as you go. Maybe they look in the mirror and you could ask them, can I add just a little bit more eyeshadow, a little bit more smoky? Can I add a little bit more color on the lips? But it's no use doing anything to their face if they're not going to feel comfortable walking out the door. So you want to make sure that they're comfortable. A little bit of a change is okay. Like if they feel just a little different and uncomfortable, let them walk around for 10, 
10 minutes or so and look in the mirror a couple times and if something's bugging them make sure they're comfortable to come back to you and get that change uh, if they need it so if you, they're like you know what this this lipstick's a little dark for me then you can blot the lipstick no problem put a little powder on top and then reapply it with something lighter and they'll be happy and more comfortable you guys can go hang out together or you could take a picture for their dating site or do whatever you have to do um, so if you're more interested in doing uh, makeup on other people and you want to know more I have so much more to teach and to tell you guys but I wanted to start with that just to kind of get a vibe and see how many people are actually interested in doing makeup on other people and yeah see if any of these tips help and don't forget you're disinfecting because that's super important you don't want to be passing any bacteria back and forth all right you guys I hope this has been good it was a different video but I want to sort of start talking about uh, makeup application techniques in the near future and this is sort of like the beginning so don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks a lot for joining me talk to you real soon have a great one bye for now <music>